Hi, I received the following question. It's, uh, if I could comment on this quote, one's personal power can be imitated. The imitation wakens the source of our inner power. If we feel ourselves bad, we should try to imagine that we are already strong. End of quote. So the question would be, what is the role of imagination and visualization in controlling the personal power and amount of energy? When does the amount of power depend on ourselves? And when does it depend on our environment? Well, first of all, we have to understand that by using imagination in this way, we're very much following the uh, Mars uh, uh, principle, not the Venus discipline. So by taking control, uh, we're really saying that our incarnated selves, uh, which are of course more limited than our higher, be higher consciousness, higher selves, should take control of our, our lives instead of our higher selves. So this, in essence, um, is also, yeah, uh, a tends towards a cold current or a dark magical technique, because we allow a smaller, more primitive part to dominate higher parts of our being or to shove aside higher parts of our being. That doesn't mean it's not a useful technique or a powerful technique but it has to be used very awarely. Because one of the problems is that many things happen to us which are not very comfortable for us. Uh, we can get ill, we can suffer pain, we can have emotional distress. And from our incarnated perspective, these are all things we would very much like to avoid. And the desire is very strong to try to get rid of these things by any means possible, including uh, spirituality. Unfortunately, most of these things which we do go through, our suffering, our pain, as well as, of course, our joy, has a, a greater purpose. It's often a repetition of patterns showing us or reflecting back to us our own nature or the nature of the cosmos. And if we are allowed to select, then very few, few people would choose to yeah, lose a loved one to death, to suffer through illness, to uh, have any crippling injuries. Um, this is because while our spirit uh, is in a way free, just moving from one life to the next, and unperturbed by the physical circumstances. Our consciousness, which is very much linked to our physical bodies, is very much inspired by the feelings of those bodies, by the instincts of those bodies. So our consciousness as it exists in our body at present is, you could say, nine parts instinct, emotion, which is arising from having a physical form, and maybe one-tenth is really coming from the spirit. So you can wonder as to the wisdom of allowing this lower vibration self to take control entirely over our lives and shutting out the rest of our spirit even more than it already is. As to the technique, um, it's also a tricky technique to, to use. Because sometimes it will have positive, sometimes it will have negative effects. Um, it is very useful, indeed, to try uh, to prepare yourself inwardly before manifesting things outwardly. So before you do something, imagine yourself doing it, see yourself doing it. And by doing this, already your energy body can start to adapt to it. You're, uh, it's just like a dog, which will start to salivate when it sees food, or it thinks of food, or Pavlov, here's the bell. In the same way, the energy body can prepare by dreaming about it, by imagining it, by practicing it, by acting it out. So this is a very useful way to use visualization and the imagination to practice already the energy body. It's a different thing, however, if we want our 
imagination to come true, not so much through practice, through being ready and prepared and doing it ourselves, but trying to use our imagination as a crowbar to move reality into a different track, into a different shape. Uh, because then we're no longer in a way, using our imagination to work inwardly. We want to use our imagination to have a direct outward effect uh, with or without having to do anything directly physically to the outside world. Um, in general, the lower forms follow the higher forms. So lower beings tend to look up at higher beings and ask for guidance, ask for blessings. In the same way we look at angels and saints and gods and goddesses. Uh, in the same way more simple beings, elemental spirits, nature spirits um, will also look up to us and to try to find out what is going on, what should we do, what is the best way for us to evolve, to progress. And by um, providing these instructions on this higher level, by instance, indeed through visualization, imagination, by creating this energetic blueprint of what things should be like, uh, these forces can be guided. They can look at your blueprint and say like, ah, okay, so this is the plan. Okay, now we understand, now we know what our role is, what we have to do, and we'll get right to it. And yeah, imagination can be very useful, especially if you do it in the form of a ritual, where you invite all the powers, um, and then you perform the act in a ritual fashion, then they can very easily yeah, gather, get enough focus and attention and life force from the ritual space to also alter themselves so they can adapt to their new roles. Uh, so in a ritual sense it's a very useful thing to act out your imagination or to yeah, create a physical yeah, symbolic representation of the things you want to happen. Um, of course these things can be both positive and negative because yeah, the famous voodoo doll where you stick the needles in is also exactly the same kind of ritual. You are yeah, imagining something happening and if yeah, there are enough forces listening to it then it a very indeed a very similar thing will happen to the person who is symbolically represented by the voodoo doll. So this is very much the power of ritual and the power we have if we decide to take leadership uh, over other powers. Some of the unintended consequences can be that our own lives become very um, derailed. Certain things are meant to happen in a certain order or they have a certain uh, function. And if we can uh, yeah, move our lives to in a, such a way that we feel comfortable with them, uh, our lives tend to stagnate a lot. Like you're sitting happily on the couch, there's a cat on your lap, uh, you have nice food, nice drink, interesting TV show. So why would you change? Why would you do anything? And uh, having a lot of power and control often leads to complacency, to decadence, if you will. And ultimately this yeah, stagnation is bad for our spiritual development. So it is not always advisable for, to develop our uh, ability at imagination to such a high degree. Other things which can be problematic is that our energy is uh, not so much manifesting back on earth but is spent in the higher dimension. So for this higher dimension to have an effect on the lower uh, world it has to be strong enough because we imagine lots of things, we think lots of things and usually these things, yeah, they are created, we imagine a beautiful cake and then we think of something else and this image of the cake falls apart. So things in these astral worlds, they don't have the same rigidity. But to be able to influence us, they need to be very rigid. They need to be very strong. They need a lot of investment of emotion, of thought. Uh, they need a lot of mental discipline. So it is not just about dreaming up something or imagining something. It's really about investing your energy and your power 
into making that image strong enough to push aside all the other images so it will come out on top because not everything which is imagined everything which is thought of can manifest there simply is not enough space or time for everything to manifest so only the stronger impulses will manifest so your imagination needs to be strong it needs to be very coherent not to fall apart or not to fluctuate too much to provide a very clear instruction um, and also you need to be aware of what powers are at your disposal and what yeah, other processes are going on because if everybody else and everything else wants to go left and you want to go right then it is very hard to go against the current but if you're aware of the energy which is yeah, around you um, astrologically in the, uh, that place of the earth uh, socially uh, then you can work with it but you have to work with the current you cannot really go against the current very easily so imagination in itself and uh, using it is, a, is an art um, but I'm getting a little bit sidetracked because to build um, uh, such a power in this higher world requires a lot of investment what you also often see is that people invest so much into this higher world that they don't have enough power left in the physical world uh, to do the manifestation so for instance I might yeah, dream of getting a nice job and I spend so much time dreaming about it, thinking of the perfect job, my wonderful colleagues my great boss who is very caring, very loving inspiring me and the interesting customers I will be working with uh, how beautiful the relationship we will have so I can spend a lot of energy on that but if I spend all my energy on that and I don't spend my time looking for a job writing uh, job applications polishing up my resume it also cannot manifest easily because on the physical level you need to create opportunities you need to in a way set the stage for the energy which you create in the higher world to connect, to flow into each other. And here we come with, to the issue of timing. And timing is very, very tricky. So often you find that even though you create the perfect model, which is strong enough, which is powerful enough, uh, it can often be years before it manifests itself. Because conditions are not perfect, are not right, there's too much interference. But ultimately you do know that if your creation is good enough it will manifest. But there is very little control over how or when it will manifest. Um, the other problem is also interpretation. Um, because what we can create are instructions for lower beings. What we can't create is instructions very much for ourselves. So we can imagine a certain situation and we can hope that such a situation will make us happy and content and blissful. But uh, although the situation can be created by lower powers, they cannot as easily create our experience of that situation. Um, because any position which might seem nice or desirable to us now, can turn out to be experienced in a very different way. Um, so, for instance, I might have some fantasy that there's this lovely young nurse uh, who's taking care of me and I'm being loved and, pa loved and pampered and cared for. And, yeah, that might manifest by having an accident and losing both my legs. Um, so even though my fantasy will come true, I might not be very happy that it is coming true and the pain of having lost my legs and the frustration of not being able to walk might overshadow my appreciation of the care I'm receiving. So it's a very tricky thing to start working with, to start taking control over these powers. Uh, personally. 
I would not recommend doing so. Um, I always feel that it is best to try to work in concert with higher powers, with higher impulses, and to receive guidance from them, rather than to try to decide your own fate, to decide this is what will happen to me. So, in this sense, yeah, I feel it is not always advisable. Let me see if I now answer the question completely. Yes, about the amount of personal power. Um, what is very important is that we realize that our power is limited. Some people say it's unlimited, but I heartily disagree. Um, we are indeed a part of the Earth. We are a part of the cosmos. We are part of the divine. But in the same way, like my little pinky is part of my body. And just like my little pinky cannot control or comprehend the rest of my body, so we also are unable to completely control or comprehend all the energies which are around us or which we are connected to. The pinky can control itself, more or less, but it is strongly influenced by everything else which is touching it. And it's the same with our, with our essence. We have a small amount of essence over which we have a lot of control. We have a much larger amount of essence for which we have little control and the rest of the matter of the universe, although we're connected to it, is effectively out of our control. And this is a situation we should yeah, simply uh, accept. And we can use the part of ourselves which is controlled to elicit a reaction, a response from the rest of the cosmos. Because in itself, most of the energy in the cosmos is feminine and therefore it's also very supportive and reactive to us. So asking is generally a good thing. But uh, asking is very different from being uh, domineering or demanding. It's very important to build up a healthy relationship with the cosmos. And this, of course, can be done in both a light or a dark way. You can yeah, focus really on your power. Um, and what you will generally see is that the power which we have personally tends to fluctuate a lot during lives. Um, because there's many energies and depending on our investment on that field of energy, our power will increase or it will be yeah, going down again because we're not paying attention to it, just like a muscle. So our consciousness can hold a certain amount, but out of the total amount of energy, it's only a little bit will be in focus. And uh, that will be available to us in this incarnation. But that doesn't mean that in other incarnations we haven't held much more power. One of the things you can do is indeed try to access these powers from your previous incarnations or to access the potential which you have within you through using your Kundalini power. Um, this is by essence a very tricky thing because the power which can manifest through you is indeed almost unlimited because everything which a human being can do is theoretically possible for a human being to do. But if you try to cram it all into your one current location, your one place, your one incarnation, the results can be spectacularly positive. You can turn into another prophet, a great holy man, a spiritual master, a, a Buddha, a Muhammad, a Jesus. Um, but it's much more likely uh, that you will go uh, well insane, kill yourself, burn yourself out, or just wrench your life yeah, uh, from its intended path and wander off into, yeah, God knows where. So it's a tricky thing to do, to start to work with changing your powers directly. Especially so on this earth, because here we have karma. And the karmatic system is basically making certain powers available to you, depending on, yeah, the qualities of your current incarnation.
and if you incarnate again then depending on the qualities of your person in that incarnation and your previous incarnations you will get access to certain powers so in a way the whole power issue is already being handled by the lords of karma um, so my preference would be if you want to have more power or access maybe to certain skills or powers you had in previous incarnations uh, talk about it pray talk to the lords of karma and say like gosh i would really like to be able to do these things because i can feel that this power is within me i feel that i have some skill with it some talent with it and I think I should manifest that now. And then, of course, lots of karma, if they are willing to hear your request, will say like, okay, so what are you willing to give up for it? What will you lose to make space, to make room for these powers to manifest themselves? Because you only have a limited amount of life force, you have a limited amount of time uh, to manifest things. So if you manifest one thing, you can't manifest something else. So it is much more about changing the mix than about acquiring more and more power. Um, this illusion of acquiring more and more power is uh, very much the path of the dark side of uh, trying to not so much transform yourself, uh, but to gather untransformed things onto yourself. So let me illustrate. Um, for instance, I want to learn about fighting. The light path is to work on it, on refining it. Like, okay, when I'm very primitive, I'll just punch a guy in the face. And when I get more skilled, okay, instead of punching it and doing very uncontrolled damage, I'll just grab his hand and put him in an arm lock. And thereby remove his ability to fight me while keeping my ability to fight him. That's already better. And so it can evolve into like understanding like how my enemy is fueled by his emotions, by his aggressions and attacking his emotions and aggressions directly. I say, ah, oh, I understand, I hear you, I respect you. Let's see if we can work this out. And this is also a way of fighting, actually preempting the fight. And this is the light path of increasing your skill, your refinement, so that the fight still happens, but on higher and higher levels, on higher and higher degrees of subtlety. So instead of only being able to punch, you're able to control or to preempt and to understand the essence of what is behind the fight or creating the fight. Well, on the dark side, it is, okay, I can't punch hard enough. Okay, let's get some brass knuckles. I can punch the person harder. Okay, well, but uh, maybe I want to kill him. Okay, let's put a knife on the brass knuckles. <laughs> and this way you're gathering more and more things which amplify your action. So what I'm doing is still the same thing. I'm throwing a punch. But by having the brass knuckles and the knife, the same punch, the same movement is creating a greater effect. So this is very much the dark side of not trying to improve yourself, but trying to increase the effect you have on the world. So if you go into imagination, this is also very important to try to imagine yourself becoming more skilled, more refined, um, not just more powerful. 